in my opinion, one of the heartbeats of manufacturing, one of the heartbeats of America is the foundries, the remaining foundries. If we can find them here in the US, well guess what? I am actually in Pennsylvania today. I am at Don's Co, as you can see behind me, a company that started in 1906, one of the last remaining forging companies in the country. So yes, of course, I had to take the time to share this with you just in case you didn't know because we are in a massive reshoring initiative right now. Chris and I are both very passionate about this subject. We're gonna talk a little bit more about why we need to support this and, and what we can actually do when we talk about bringing things back from other countries and the cost effectiveness of, of where we're losing money in the time frame of getting it over here, of maybe scrap pieces of the communication. Chris knows this stuff far more than I do, but man, you guys know my excitement when it comes to U.S. manufacturing and I had the real privilege to have Chris on camera today, which is going to amplify that version of this voice and this foundry and what we're going to do with U.S. manufacturing as well. Chris, Thank you so much for being here, first of all. And let's talk about what's been going on here at Donsco for such a long time. You, a physicist turned engineer, have been doing this at Donsco for 25, 25 years, years yeah. now. So I would love to hear more of this story and what we're doing here at Donsco. Well, really what we're doing is we're creating the backbone for the American infrastructure, uh, whether it be an airplane in the sky, an automobile, heavy truck, uh, commercial parts, consumer parts, railroad parts, everything starts with a casting. And castings are really recycling all the waste that the consumer, industrial, and commercial sectors make. We bring scrap metal in from junkyards and we melt it down, alloy it up, and sell value-added products that go in the things in, that we use every day in our lives. And that's a great start to the conversation. You and I have had the privilege to talk off camera, so I kind of know a little bit of secrets of how to navigate some of this. You mentioned to me 90% of some of these parts, if not all of these parts, are come from recycled goods. And I would like to talk a little bit as well as we segue into the conversation that people have, certainly internally, at so many factories around the country of, well, my costs are lower up front. Well, you're costing more at the end of the day. So let's talk about some of those numbers and why it's important to support U.S. manufacturing here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I think, I think really cost comes down to your total landed cost. What is the total cost to get that product into your factory or to your customer? Don't look at individual costs on a quote to quote basis, but when you factor in freight, when you factor in lead time, when you factor in the time value of money and how much cash you have to have tied up to import and bring things on the ocean and put things in a warehouse and accumulate batch quantities and what if you find scrap and you have to reject everything. When you start looking at the true landed cost to get a product, we should be making everything where we use it. And if we're using it here in the United States, we need to be making it in the United States. Not only does it support our communities and support the other infrastructure, but it really is the lowest cost way to manufacture products. It is low, and I agree with you 100%. It's just trying to get that message across to not necessarily look at that front number where you saved a nickel, a dime, a penny, and look at the true cost of what's going on, and we both agree on that subject. Now, there's some other topics that you and I have spoken about that I think are worth bringing up, and that's the vertical integration that you have here at Don's Co., and the fact that it's a one-stop shop, and to support that as well. But it's also important that we talk when we're talking about supporting the U.S. manufacturing and what's going on, that cost, that we also talk about that vertical integration but also that carbon footprint, which I know is very, very important to you. And we talked a little bit about recycling, but there's more to it than that. Yeah, I mean, everybody has sustainability initiatives right now. That's the big buzzword, and it's, it's a good thing. But if you really look at sustainability, you know, why aren't we making everything as, as local as we can? So when you look at a vertically integrated company like, like Donsco, you know, we're bringing the raw materials in from local uh, supply base, local scrap dealers. We're melting the metal at our two foundries. We're making the molds, pouring the castings, finishing the castings. But at that point, a casting isn't really worth a whole lot. It needs to have more value added to it. It needs to be heat treated. It needs to be painted. It needs to be plated. It needs to be machined. Well, that's where we come into play. So we have our own machining operations. We are excellent at supply chain management. We have a local network of every kind of painting and coating that you could want. We have excellent local heat treaters. So when you look at a vertically integrated company like Donsco, it's really going to help the, the, the buyers out there uh, who's wearing multiple hats. Right now, we're all wearing multiple hats. We're all doing 
so many more jobs than we used to. So if you can deal with one company and you can get a finished product that you take right to your assembly line, that is going to be uh, less stressful for the person that has to manage that supply chain on the customer side. You know, let us do it for you. And also the internal battles. You make a casting, now the casting may not machine well, and the machine shop says it's the foundry. The foundry says it's the, it's the machine shop. Well, if I'm a buyer, I'm, I'm refereeing, right? I don't want to be spending my time refereeing. So I just get a good product from Donsco. I let Donsco worry about that. I lock my two plant managers in a room, and they fight it out. But the customer is shielded from that. They never see that. They just get 100% good product every time. And we think that's the powerful of vertical integration. We've been doing it since the 80s. Back before it was a cool thing to do, Donsco was a one-stop shop. You were cool before cool was cool, I guess, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, I know you and I can talk for hours, and before this video turns into a podcast, which will probably happen, hint, hint, wink, wink, yes, I'm going to bring him onto the gun show as well. Um, I'm going to close this out with, I see a lot of dust. I see a lot, a lot of fire when I, I look into the plant back there, when I see the foundry back there. But there's so much intelligence, there's so much technology that's going into what you're doing there. Would you mind discussing with the audience the amount of technology that's kind of built around the fire and dust that we see? Well, fire and dust, one of the things that, that I heard years ago from an old foundryman, uh, when the, the e-commerce and we were going to become a service-based society, he said, if you don't make it, mine it, or grow it, you're not adding value. You're not adding wealth to the economy. So that smoke and that dust, that's the value. That is the value of, of starting uh, from the very beginning of that supply chain. That's what we're doing. We're adding value add to basically waste product. So that's, uh, that, that's very important. But as far as what goes on be, behind these walls, you know, there's more ethernet, there's more Wi-Fi, there's more PLC controllers, you know, big data. We have, we have ethernet all over this plant. We have sensors going into centralized servers. We have terribly smart people that take this data and they're very predictive. So the technology in a plant like this, you know, we melt metal using electricity. It, it's the application of physics. We design our tooling using thermodynamics and using you know, fluid flow and Bernoulli's equation. So yes, there's smoke, yes, there's dust, but, and, 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 and there's noise in a factory like this, but the science that it takes a factory like this to run and to maintain a factory like this, it takes every discipline of the math and the science. So when you talk about a STEM education, this is STEM, this is the application of that type of education. I don't think it could have been said better. Tune in for the podcast coming soon. In the meantime, since 1906, you have Donsco. And guys, gals, support American manufacturing as we started in the beginning, as we bring it full circle at the end. This is the heartbeat of not just manufacturing, but America. This is the heartbeat of all of it. Bring it local. We're reshoring. Connect with Donsco at any time. I'm going to close this out. Website where everyone can find you? www.donsco.com. Mic drop for that. I'm, I'm not going to drop the mic. I'm actually not going to do that. However, thank you all for watching the MTD CNC channel. Chris, Mr. Chris Buck, physicist turned engineer. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.